In this video, we're going to be taking a look at subtools inside of ZBrush. So the earlier video, um, we kind of accidentally or kind of maybe made a subtool based off of the masking. Um, wasn't really quite planning for that, but um, I think it uh, still kind of works out okay. Um, subtools, you could make something with a subtool just like we look with the masking where we've got this extract and we could extract that shape out. But there's a whole lot more to it than just that. Um, you can actually import objects in from a different program like Maya or something like that, and you can have that uh, be brought into the program as a uh, subtool. And subtools are basically just more pieces. Uh, there is a hierarchy. There is a top subtool, this tool at the very top, and this kind of acts like the parent, but um, there's not really a hierarchical relationship or anything. It's just kind of like this is the top piece or whatever. There are some scale things that are kind of related to that, but nothing you really got to worry too much about right now at this stage um, while you're kind of working with things. So um, what we can do is anytime you want to add um, a piece uh, to here, it's pretty simple. You can just hit append and you can append um, any one of these primitives that you see here. So maybe I want to take a shape like the cone that we have here and I can push it on the cone and select it down here. And you can see that we can select through these different subtools like we see. Um, if you hold on Alt, you can click on a subtool and switch that way. Um, so that's uh, an easy way that you can kind of get to these different subtools that you have. Now normally whenever you work with primitives, you have to set some resolutions and things like that. But as soon as you append um, uh, a primitive, it becomes a polymesh 3D. Normally when you work with primitives, you have to convert it into a make polymesh 3D to freeze all the information on it and make it into just like a mesh. But again, when you append these as a subtool, you don't have to kind of worry about that. Now what you can do uh, right off the bat is that you would get uh, something like if you put it on the gizmo tool, you could move this thing, you could, I'm going to just kind of grab this on the corner and we could rotate this into maybe a position and maybe uh, scale this thing down this way and I'm going to scale it kind of along this way and just trying to build something that maybe feels like a, a horn structure something like this within through here okay and so um, the other thing is with this subtool let's say I like this on this side I want to duplicate it I can duplicate the subtool you can delete them um, but I do know that we have under deformation after we've duplicated the thing we can go and mirror and we can mirror on X like that after we've mirrored something you can actually take these and you can uh, merge you can merge them down so if we go to the merge and say merge down it'll merge one of the subtools the top subtool down with this other one so now we've got something that is uh, completely symmetrical and we could take this if we turn on the polyframe you can see what we've got here for information for this and we can go back to our like tap 4 for the move brush and then maybe tap X to turn on symmetry and then we can start uh, playing around with the the shape of this a bit right and then again this just becomes like our kind of liquid gooey clay that we have that's digital and kind of fun to use to where we can explore ideas and all that and the whole undo system that works with it and everything else and now I'm just taking my move brush and then kind of making it conform a little bit better to maybe something that I had kind of previously sketched out on the mask. Now, what we started off with was Dynamesh. And uh, we could convert this over to Dynamesh. That's a possibility. Um, before I do, I'm just going to rename this and call this Horns, like this. So that's another thing with these subtools. You can name them and give them names, you know, like I can call this thing, call this head, like that. And maybe just call this detail like that and we've got names for this and what I was saying about the um, this Dynamesh is that we could convert this over to Dynamesh and you can see if we hit this we can do something like that pretty quickly um, if you're concepting you probably want to be in Dynamesh but if you do know the shape that you want I'm gonna hit undo uh, a few times we could actually add subdivisions to this. So if you click divide, it's going to add a division to the model. I'm going to add another one. You can see how it's adding more polygons to the model. 
the polyframe is still on and it still shows us our base cage. If we turn that off and then turn it on, you can see all the different polys that it's making. We could divide it again like that. What's interesting about this is what we saw with the Dynamesh is that you have to kind of sculpt up um, kind of slowly. This, for a resolution on this, um, let's say this is the highest subdivision level, you can see that I still need more. So what I could do is divide that just kind of like that just like this and I can keep working my way around the model and so if I don't have enough resolution I might have to divide again and you can see as we add more divisions we're gonna get more fidelity in there so that's how you can do that but with the subdivi subdivision levels you can actually drop this down and go step through these different subdivision levels that you have so that's um, kind of a different feature about using the subdivision levels. And so you'd have to know like what works to your advantage. Eventually you'd want maybe some decent topology like uh, what we've got for the horns and you'd want to work with subdivision levels. Um, it's just uh, at the beginning stages if you're re really pushing and pulling surfaces around quite a bit and you are uh, doing a lot of design exploration you don't know what the shape is having subdivision levels at that point maybe doesn't make the most sense right so again we've got a sub tool for this um, I could keep sculpting on this and do some really cool and interesting stuff but again this is more about uh, working with the sub tools in here so again I could go to sub tool and then I could um, append I'm gonna show you real quick uh, something that might benefit you on this sub tool here I want to add some kind of detail on the end of this so if I go to B and then go to insert and tap I we do have some different IMM primitives and then this is IMM primitives and then this is H I believe this is like for high res like the model quality is maybe a little bit higher on these so let's go B and then I and then go to primitives on this and I think I think that might be something about like what is going on with that. Now we can do insert sphere and we can click and then drag on this. Now it doesn't like the fact that this actually has subdivision levels. So here's what I found for something like this. We can duplicate this, uh, maybe hide this one, and then go to geometry and we can actually delete our lower subdivision levels on this. And then now it's gonna let us click and drag out for this. Um, what's interesting is that you can actually um, put it on the gizmo tool and you could cycle through the different models that exist within here. So if you wanted to do some exploration of the shapes, you could do that. You could rotate this thing this way maybe, kind of like that. I'll push it right in here. Right there, kind of like that and I could cycle through the different models and find one that uh, kind of suits me. So I think I think this will work. This will be pretty cool. Um, I'm going to put it on draw after that. Get off the gizmo tool. Let's go back to sub tool. And what it does whenever you pull these things out, it automatically masks this section off and it leaves this unmasked you can actually go to split and you can say split unmasked points and if you do that it'll split off the spheres and then it's going to leave the horns that you had there and we can just delete those away and then now what we're left with is we've got our horns that we had before should have the subdivision levels on it right as long as we deleted the right one away and then now we've got these two spheres that exist as their own sub tools um, so that's another way of kind of working with this um, to where let's just go ahead and put it on four and I'm gonna put on the move brush now that I've moved that detail um, yeah so that's just kind of a way that you can kind of work and use uh, some of the tools to kind of generate some shapes a different way other than straight up appending them uh, you could you could do something like what I just did there and then split uh, those things off at that point kind of like that so um, what I have here at this point 
maybe if I hit Control D, you can see I can add subdivision levels to that to make it a bit smoother because it was a bit rough looking. Uh, you just have to kind of manage and kind of think about if you are going to use the subtool, um, use the subtools and use subdivision levels. You got to think about how much geometry that you uh, might potentially be adding to something on there like that. Um, now, if we do delete lower, we can do something like go to B and then I, and then we can do the primitives again. And if we went to a sphere, maybe like this, one thing that we could do that's kind of neat is if we drug this out and hold down control, we can make um, inserts that are the size of, about the size of our brush. And if we don't like how they sit, you can see how it kind of pulls out and sits on the surface like that. If we go to brush and we dock this over here and take a look at this, if we go to depth, you can see we can embed this. I want, I want this to be like halfway in the surface, kind of like that. So if I drag out and hold down control, I can do something like that. Um, I think I want it even further down in here. So I can click and drag out something like this. And what I'll show you is after I get some of these built up, I can actually just split off this back piece. So we got something like that. Um, now I just got rid of the mask, hold down control and drag on there and it gets rid of the mask. Um, now if I hold down control and shift, I can isolate just that part there. And this time I'm going to go to subtool and I'm going to say split hidden. And so it's going to split all these guys into their own subtool. I'm going to put this on solo so you can just see this. So that made this his own subtool and made this. And that's how we can use split hidden for something like that. Now I'll go to this, hold down Alt and click on these, and then hit uh, what was, hit Control D, and that'll add subdivision levels to that, and you can see kind of what that looks like at that point uh, for this. Um, now with the subtools, we can also take this, and again we can merge this down, and hit OK, and that becomes a shape again. I know it's kind of silly that I split that off and then merge them down, but then we can do something like go to Geometry, and go to Dynamesh, and those are all a bunch of individual spheres right now. Cool thing about Dynamesh is that uh, we could do, put this up to maybe something like 700 and click Dynamesh, and it would merge all these spheres together, and now that becomes one piece where we can kind of smooth out the results of this and get a kind of a look like this for these, for these details. I'll hold down Alt, and I'll click back on the, the horns there, and um, yeah, so we can. I'm not. I'm not sure what I would do uh, design-wise on this. I know it's starting to be a bit more organic with the look of that. It might make sense to do uh, Damien Standard and do some kind of more design kind of thing that are that is more man-made instead of uh, like a horn that was uh, nature created. So I'll do something like this. And again we have that um, lazy, if we go to our stroke, this lazy snap is turned up so we can actually snap to some of these lines that we uh, were making. like that. And we'll do a little bit more and through here. I'm just kind of speed through this a little bit faster. Connect these up and almost done there. 
And the only thing I might try to do is take a look at this and take a look at these details that I got here. Hold on Alt and click on that and then put it on the gizmo tool. Hold on Alt to put that in the center and then reset that and then just scale these down. Now I'm scaling this thing down or up. I have symmetry turned on and it's scaling from some central point. So if we put on local sim we can do something like this which is really what I'm hoping for. Something more like that. And just pull that out there a little bit like that. And here is what we got. So I think that will be good enough for showing off the subtools. I'm just going to click this BPR render button and you can see it's going to do a nice little best possible render for us so that's another little thing um, there's a whole can make a whole video just about that alone but just being able to click that button should give you a nice little render at the end and uh, that should give you enough to kind of start playing around with some of the sub tools and having some fun with that